Ooh, a different brew with the same formula, yet so much fucking better. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Suicide Squad. Kind of sequel, kind of reboot by James Gunn following the Suicide Squad on another suicide mission. Pretty much this film does almost everything better than the original. The original obviously is shrouded in a lot of controversy from the re-edits, the reshoots, the complete fumbling of the entire movie by WB. And then this one, James Gunn gets essentially his entire free reign to do a R-rated version of the Guardians of the Galaxy film with a massive amount of death and destruction and mayhem and jokes and humor. It's almost the polar opposite of the first film. The first film is very dark, very gritty, very moody in its coloring, whereas this one has a lot more kind of a white shell to it. That one part in the trailer that people have seen where they're walking in the rain. For the most part, I didn't mind it. Admittedly, when that whole scene happens with the rain and the sun, I was kind of like, Okay, how did that happen? That was a little random. But as I said, this film does a lot of things better than the original. It definitely sets up the characters a lot better. It doesn't have this very forced soundtrack. The first one did. It's not low-hanging fruit music. It's a pretty decent soundtrack choice by James Gunn. You care about these characters a lot more. You really see that they're all assholes, but you kind of come to like them all, whereas in the first film you kind of were forced to because that's how the film was going. Everything about this plot just makes a lot more sense. It definitely has a lot more cohesiveness to it. Sure it has a few too many villains I would say. I think the whole point of this movie is that it keeps you guessing. You really don't know who's gonna make it to the end because when the film starts off they kill off a few people who I was not expecting at all and that kind of continues for the rest of film, maybe there's a little bit of a lull in the middle where not so many die, but in the end there's a few more who die. There's a few people who didn't make it to the end who I thought for sure were gonna make it to the end, so that was a fun surprise to see. If there was any kind of takeaways from this, maybe the script and the story is a little bit rudimentary. It is essentially a restart of the first film admittedly without that really bad twist and this silly villain. The villain in this film, as some of you have seen, is that giant starfish thing. And some people think it's a little bit stupid, but actually, this little starfish is actually a villain in one of my favorite episodes of Batman Beyond. There's that episode where Terry McGinnis teams up with the, the future Justice League, and things kind of don't seem uh, as sure as they should. There's a few things that are off, and it turns out that Staryu has taken control of Superman and the Justice League, and Terry has to take on the entire League by himself almost. And I remember it being really, really terrifying to me when I watched it as a kid. So to see this thing come back again, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I know what you're capable of. And admittedly, James Gunn definitely takes the gore factor with it. There's a lot of gore in this movie. Very, very violent scenes in this film but it's humorous violence right off the bat to right to the end it's keeps you in a good mood you're laughing you do have some awe moments because James Gunn has been able to do that and oddly enough it's with animals and non-human characters as much as it is with the human characters which we've seen that with Groot the shark thing is essentially an r-rated version of Groot I, I thought that was very funny Aside from the deaths, you kind of know how the story's gonna play out, so there is a little bit of a negative to that. Again, the color scheme, while it is an opposite of the original, I kind of wished for a little bit more color, considering James Gunn is so well known for color. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a visual delight to see, just from a color palette. So to see it kind of really whitewashed out in this one was a little bit odd. There is a few camera movements too that I thought were a bit fast, a bit kind of unprofessional. There's one point where one of the characters is walking into this room and the camera is constantly readjusting. It's like when I have to use my Ronin for when I'm shooting weddings and I have to constantly readjust. So it was like, I thought it was a little odd that they took that one because the next few cuts immediately afterwards are clearly on an arm. Like everything is smooth and steady. So I thought that was just a little bit weird. <laughs> but honestly, these are all really small nitpicks. I would definitely say this is probably one of the better DC movies. I don't know, there's not exactly a lot in the category of good DC movies. It's definitely probably one of the better ones. Is it this massive, amazing movie that some people have kind of made it out to be? It's not 
the be all end all. It's good. It's a welcome change in terms of how the DCA movies have been. It's up there, like technically the only other ones I can think of that are in this category would be Wonder Woman and Shazam, and I definitely think I would rather watch this one than those two again. Maybe Wonder Woman, because I do like the whole aesthetic of Wonder Woman. But either way, The Suicide Squad is definitely a movie you guys should check out. I saw it in IMAX, it was very fun to watch it in that. Good laughs, good humor, good fun. So I'm gonna give it a five out of seven. And the funny thing is too, uh, is that James Gunn immediately after finishing filming that movie, he then started working on a television show based off one of the characters. And it actually, it was being worked on right across the street from my studio. And there's a joke that I wish I could tell you, but if I tell you it, I will spoil the movie. So maybe I'll talk about it later. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did leave a like, and if you're interested in more subscribe, otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.